Hi. Um, I'd like this talk to actually be uh, really useful. Uh, I'm going to start with a question, actually. Uh, how many of you have heard about the term dark patterns? So, quite a few. Um, now, the next thing, I want to actually tell you a bit about an experience that I had. And hopefully, um, well, hopefully, that's actually, sadly, maybe you won't uh, actually feel that way, too. Um, so I'm going to start with the, the idea that one and a half years ago, um, I was just sitting at an office uh, and figuring out, like, I'd like to actually delete my Facebook account, not deactivate it, delete it. And then I quickly found out that my experience turned sour. It's actually very easy to get an account on Facebook, but it's actually very hard to get out of it. I mean, Facebook actually feels a bit like this uh, when you when you want to close it, because there's there's a certain way, a certain uh, emotional manipulation, which we'll we'll see uh, a bit further, and there is also it actually takes you two weeks to close your account. Uh, I don't know how many of you went through that experience, but for me it wasn't a, a pleasant one. So I asked myself, why is that? Uh, I'm not a designer uh, in, in my background, but I started thinking, uh, what, what's happening here? And then I eventually found out that the internet is a big slot machine, where you scroll to update, uh, you have different rewards ingrained in every website, and you're essentially playing a game. So I went a bit into history. And this man is called, yeah, this man, Bernays. He's actually a nephew of Freud. And he is uh, probably the father of uh, public, what we call today public relations. Then it was actually called propaganda. And in the meantime, propaganda got like a bad rap. Um, but we can see here that the synonyms for propaganda or public relations are actually information, advertising, brainwashing, uh, things like that. Um, and I'd like to uh, actually stay a bit a uh, hundred years ago because this is a really uh, important thing that happened that actually jump-started the, the industries of advertising and marketing and um, yeah, public relations. This was called Torches of Freedom. It was a media, uh, yeah, media campaign uh, done by Bernays and his team. And they uh, successfully solved one problem that tobacco companies had uh, 100 years ago. Basically, they, they were losing half of their market share because it was seen uh, as a bad thing for women to smoke. So they came up with a solution to actually solve that problem, to have everyone smoking. And they came up with the, this idea of torches of freedom. At the time, it was a, a very big thing, the, the uh, women vote. And so they paid um, a group of, of women to actually go on, on a, I think, in a celebration day in New York. And um, at one sign, lift their cigarettes and say, these are torches of freedom. Actually, free associating uh, that they are free. They can, you know, the, 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 um, the women vote associated with uh, smoking and with a sense of liberty and with a sense of equality since the cigarette actually hints at something that also, you know, males have. Fast forward to, to today. Um, how many of you are familiar with this, this type of graphic, this, this scheme? Um, it's actually called the Hooke model. Uh, Nir Eyal is the author of a book who is talking about this. I wanted to call it the desire engine uh, because in a way it is. And this whole thing that started a century ago is basically a, a desire production industry. And yeah, the, the four simple steps are the following. Uh, there's a, an action that might or might not be the desired action for that uh, individual. There's a variable reward, just as in a slot machine, uh, where you, get, you might get a reward, but you don't know. It's exactly like with notifications, when you scroll to update, you might get something, or you might not, but that keeps you committed. And that actually um, functions as an as a internal trigger. 
that keeps you playing, keeps you uh, trying again. Maybe you'll get something next time. This is a quote by him that, of course, taken out of context, we can associate a good or a positive message out of it or a bad message out of it. But the thing that caught my eye was reducing the thinking. And I know he, he meant it in a, in a way that uh, products should be easy to use. At the same time, when you reduce the thing or when you make something really easy, you actually switch people from the logical, slow, rational way of thinking to the irrational, uh, primal needs, uh, really fast acting, when you don't catch yourself doing, doing things, really. So I, I said, uh, my title was uh, Dark Patterns. Uh, I want to actually show you what dark patterns are because you, you have to see them for yourself. Uh, it, it's a bit like, like this uh, analogy with, with what is water, uh, asking, you know, being asked by fish, because they, you, know, you might not see the water, and I certainly didn't for many years. As an example, as a, as a tutorial, uh, onboarding, imagine uh, Times Square without ads. Uh, basic, basically, Times Square with, with an ad blocker. Um, certainly, this guy wouldn't be happy about that, but we have to imagine to, to get it through. Um, I'd like to start with a chemical, chemical dark pattern, uh, because this is something very dear to me. You know, you know, I, I want to share it with, with more people. Uh, Coca-Cola has no taste memory. That's, that's design. That's, that's by design. It's on purpose. So that means you can drink one and you don't get satiated by it. You, you can have another one and another one. And another one, like every day. Uh, so I'm going to be helped by this wonderful source. Uh, it's actually a website funded through a grant in, in a university in the US, um, UXP Dark Patterns. And they did the wonderful job of actually collecting all these uh, dark patterns examples into five categories. And we're going to briefly go through it. I want to start with a, with a personal example that happens all too often, at least in Europe. And this is kind of like a dark pattern bingo, because it has everything. Like it's ha it, has, it nags you every time you go on a new website, it's like, this pops up. And really, I don't think that many people actually go into more options, because let's face it, the intent of this uh, interface is actually to say, just click I accept and that, you know, go, go through it. But actually, when you go through more options, you see this. This is a default opt-in. And you actually have to, again, go override the intent of the website to actually press reject all. Some worse, even worse, on some websites, you, you have to actually manually press them. Then there's also the, the nagging notification, push notifications in, in apps like Instagram, where you can't say no. Uh, then there's also the pop-up that's also uh, bundled with some confirmed shaming. If you can see here, it's actually but too, it's even a little on, on this screen. It says, no thanks, I prefer paying full price. Uh, then there's the Uber partner app where clearly there are some metrics that, that Uber is hashing for the independent drivers that actually nudges people into, okay, so you're just six dollars away you should uh, you should keep driving and there's yeah among my favorites is the is the idea that uh if you want to see your account that's fine online if you can if you want to modify it whatever buy more it's fine if you want to close it god forbid you have to call us and the uh, number is uh, only between 6 a.m to saturday pacific time and yeah we'll be happy to assist you Easy in, very hard out. Then there's also this kind of bamboozling, really. What would you click in this case? Just take a second. You want to close your uh, account. I mean, would you go back or cancel? You, you would cancel, but then what are you canceling? Like, <laughs> then there's the, the, the very popular uh, LinkedIn onboarding. Uh, step where you're actually 
nagging not only yourself but also all, all your contacts when when you get that annoying message of someone join LinkedIn you should too and I even left out most of the examples with airlines and hotel bookings because that's a big big part and I don't want to take another 10 minutes to go through that but just let, let's let's concentrate on this this is called a forced action type of dark pattern. So when you press let's go, you can't unclick let the, the, the website terms of use because there's no button. It's just by clicking to use the website, you actually agree with the terms of use. I mean, they're not even pretending anymore. Or this is a bit more particular example. Uh, if you want to actually make an account for, for a job portal, I guess for, for a job at auto, it doesn't matter the company. Uh, it's, it's really like uh, you're making an account and you have to get the emails. Otherwise, you don't get the an account. So in a nutshell, that's kind of it. Dark patterns are bad design on purpose. Or you could say it's actually visual elements that are designed to trick users into doing something that they might not want to do. They might want to do that, sure. But if not, they'll be probably tricked into doing it. And m most people fall for it, especially people who might not be digitally native, as we, as we say, or uh, might be from another culture, or they just don't have the time to go through this. So I'm going to keep on going with a few more examples. Uh, let me know when you see the link here to unsubscribe. I mean, it's, it's a bit small, and it's actually there. And it doesn't look any, at, at all as, as a link. Then there's the, uh, another interfa interface interference, where it's actually using layout and color and size to emphasize the intent of the design. And there's also a physical example of it. Like, it's not only online. You can do that with, for Pate too. And there's Facebook again. I'm going to keep going back to this. Facebook, how, how they do, how they get away, even with ad blockers on. Like, I have three different ad blockers. This still went on, and then I figured out I have to delete my account. This, this is not accidental. This is something, someone really, really planning this out to get, get that sponsored message in front of your eyes. There's Zynga. Surprise. You, you, you don't even know, like you have to select the, the, the message to actually see the link for unsubscribing. And there's also maybe uh, an example for, for people, maybe very small children or, or maybe seniors or just again, people who don't pay attention because really people don't read on internet, we skim. Uh, an airline, an example about additional charges that may apply all too often. And I, I want to get back to this because this is, this is the screen that uh, Facebook greeted me when I wanted to, to actually get off the platform. It felt like, actually, Amy will miss you. I mean, this is not my actual account, but... And then everything that you might select for leaving, there's always, you know, you have to win people back because that's how Facebook Go grows on and goes on. And there, there are countless examples about really maybe trying to be funny at some times, but maybe backfiring. This might be probably funny. No thanks, I'll just swing by IKEA. But then this, whenever you buy something, then you don't want faster delivery or free delivery. And that kind of contradicts with what you would want, and that's not a nice feeling. Or this, or this, or the opt-in, opt-out dance, where you actually have to read everything to know that you should tick or not tick. Tick, and this is actually like tick, not tick, 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 not tick, tick, tick. Sounds it even has like a rhythm to it. And I promise you, I think, I think this is the last one. It's, it's really click allow if you're not a robot. Uh, I mean, you, you will get notifications because, yeah, that's the intent. 
And I want to go back to it, to this, um, because even if it's not entirely uh, true, and it might be only the imagination of, of a few people who have actually impact or can actually influence our actions every day, it, it pays to be able to look back in history and, and figure out what happened before this. Because UX didn't come out of nowhere. It actually comes out on the, on the back of, uh, of a medium, the, the internet, which is really more powerful than TV, which is again more powerful than radio. So we have to be even more careful about how we uh, spend our time reading or engaging with the world. So this is the part where I'm going, actually going away from, from showing you examples to um, uh, maybe a few words of advice or, or my wish for, for everyone else. Four steps you could do for, uh, for actually starting a discussion or a conversation on this. Actually recognize that there are dark patterns and this is, this is not the way it should be, like the default way. Step two. As you can, and if you, if you can, just avoid the organizations that, that you use these things. Because probably the intent of the business doesn't align with your intent. So there's not a fit, really. Step three, tell others about them. Again, it's not a default as it should be. It's just because maybe we don't read or we don't, we don't pay so much attention on, on this. And most importantly, think for yourself. I mean, uh, this, is, this is really important uh, to, to question and to, even if you're wrong when you're questioning it, maybe, maybe you are, maybe you don't, maybe you aren't. But you should question and you should think for yourself. And, and perhaps you'll be more like this guy and less uh, like the, the guy at the, at the beginning. Uh, yeah, at the beginning. Thank you. <laughs>